Hey, it's Ryan over at Two Minute Tennis, and this video is all about how to improve your serve, both from a power standpoint, being able to hit the ball faster, but also being able to use that racket speed in order to make the ball spin more for more control. So I'm gonna be walking you through the seven checkpoints on the serve. Think of checkpoints as mile markers. So if you scroll through the video of your serve, you'll know what to look for. You should get to a certain place and a couple things should be occurring. So I'm gonna walk you through each checkpoint. There are seven of them, as I mentioned, and then I'm gonna walk you through what should occur during each checkpoint so you know what to look for in your own serve and you can make the adjustments. So the first thing is the grip. So the grip should be a continental. Now, if you're a straight beginner and you're just learning the game, you don't necessarily have to use this grip. It's a little hard at first, but if you have been playing tennis for a while, you know, all the way up to a very elite level, you should be using a continental grip. So the two places we wanna know about on the hand to get any grip are the base knuckle of the index finger and the heel pad. And our goal is to put that line that's drawn between those two spots for the serve on bevel number two. Bevel two is right here if you're right-handed. Bevel one is on top, and by the way, anytime you're counting the bevels, you need to make sure your racket's on its edge. Bevel one is on top of the octagon. Bevel two is here if you're right-handed. Now if you're lefty, bevel two is here. Righties count to the right, lefties count to the left. So bevel two is right here. It's that 45 degree angle flat bevel. My goal then is to take this line and place it on that bevel. So I take this line, base knuckle and heel pad, and I put my heel pad first, I put that spot right on bevel two, I take the spot on my index finger, bevel number two, and now I have a continental grip. That is the grip that's best for a serve for a couple reasons, racket speed, being able to put the spin on the ball. So please, if you've been playing tennis for any length of time, you should be attempting to use the continental grip. It can be tough at first, but I know you can get it with some practice. So once you have the grip, now we get to do checkpoint number one. Checkpoint number one is the service ready position. I want you to imagine this is the side view and I'm serving that way. So I walk up to the baseline, I bounce the ball. Let's talk about what should occur in checkpoint one. Arms relaxed, racket resting on the ball. Many players hold like this or like this, like this. You'll even see Djokovic is like this. I'm not a big fan of the way he starts. Obviously, 17 Grand Slams works for him. I just wouldn't teach it to a student. I like players to have very relaxed arms. The looser you are, the faster you're gonna travel. So it's a good thing to be really, really loose. You should have the continental grip, racket resting on the ball, and you'll notice the way I'm holding the ball is like I'm holding a, a bottle of water. So many players have erratic tosses because their palm is up, then they end up flicking the wrist or bending their elbow, rolling the ball off their fingers. You can actually have a more consistent toss and be able to coil more if your arm is in this position, again, like you're holding a glass of water. So hold the ball like a bottle of water, glass of water, rest the racket on the ball. From the front view, the continental grip, you'll notice, will often have the racket slightly open. Many players, they'll begin their serve and they'll bounce the ball with their racket, which indicates a forehand grip. But then when they go to serve, their strings point down. You watch the best players in the world, most of them because they use a continental grip, because they all use a continental grip, uh, or something even maybe even more extreme, but because they've got at least a continental grip, their racket, most of them, is slightly open. So if you're just learning the continental grip, I would highly recommend that not only do you make sure that your grip is right, that the base knuckle and your heel pad are on bevel number two, but that you also have the racket slightly open. That's just an indicator of using the proper grip. So I bounce the ball with only my hand. Don't bounce with your racket because that will promote using a forehand grip. Bounce the ball with only my hand. Bounce the ball with only my hand. My arms are relaxed. You'll notice my racket is slightly open and racket resting on the ball. This is checkpoint number one. I forgot to mention your feet. You're gonna have your feet very much like you're on a skateboard. Try not to have your back foot way behind you. I know Federer does that, but for amateurs, it tends to create a false sense of coiling. Coiling is when the upper body turns more than the lower body, and we want to coil, that's a good thing. If you place your right foot, if you're right-handed, way behind you, again, the baseline is right here, and I'm serving that way. If your right foot's way behind you, even if you turn your upper body quite far, you're still not coiled. 
bring your right foot up more behind your, your, bring your back foot up more behind your front foot so that when you actually coil the upper body, it's turned more than the lower body and then we get to use that energy later in the serve. Front foot can be angled toward the net post, back foot basically parallel to the baseline. All right, that's checkpoint number one. Checkpoint number two, after we coil our body away from the target and we lead slightly with the tossing hand and we want to lead slightly with the tossing hand because it creates the environment for racket speed. If I lift my racket up first, my racket has to slow down to wait for the ball. If after I coil my body away from my target, I'll have a little weight shift away. As I toss the ball, if I get the toss to go up first, slightly, again, you, I don't want you splitting your arms this way, but if the tossing hand comes up slightly first, that creates the environment where the racket then has to speed up to make contact. And we want that, we want to serve with a fast racket. So creating the environment for racket speed is a very important thing. So we coil, we toss, I can't do the toss because I'm in my basement, but I'm going to toss the ball and this is checkpoint number two. Now the ball is already out of my hand at this point because I let go around head level. The ball is already out of my hand at this point, but I want you to notice my racket. Again, I'm serving this way. I'm not pointing the tip of my racket at the back wall or the back fence if you're indoors, right? Or, or, or if you're playing on a court. But I want you to notice where the tip of my racket is pointing. I actually just came across on Instagram a picture of Arthur Ashe tossing and his racket's in this position. The tip of the racket is pointing along the baseline. This is what's called, or what, what I call, or what Vic Braden called, palm down. So this position, you should be able to put a ball in the throat of the racket. The strings are pointing down, your palm is down, your elbow is back. I would say 95% of all tennis players in the world do not get into this position. They're either getting trying to get into that trophy pose position, or worse, they get into a waiter's tray. So it's gonna be really important when you toss the ball that you have your racket level to the ground and you could place a ball in the throat of the racket. I would highly recommend after watching this video that you just go outside, toss the ball, don't catch it, just toss it, and then look at your racket. When the racket is around chest level, the racket should be level to the ground. From there, the racket obviously will go up into that trophy pose idea to be able to knock the birthday hat off the head. But in, in my experience, players bypass this vital position of throwing a football, an American style football, throwing a baseball. Too many players, the moment they go across their feet, they try to get into the trophy pose. You will get into the trophy pose on the serve. You, your racket will get here, but it's not if you get there, that's important, as much as it is how you get there. The racket, when it gets from, when it approaches the trophy pose, should be coming from in front of you to behind you. What we don't want is the tip of the racket pointing at the back fence and then you do a bicep curl. That is not the throwing motion. The throwing motion from the back, if I'm serving this way, the throwing motion isn't this. The throwing motion isn't this, like a bicep curl. It's not, I bend and then throw. The throwing motion is this. My, the throwing position is my forearm is basically level to the ground. That's the throwing motion. So if I just put a racket in my hand, there's the position I was just talking about. A ball can sit in the throat of the racket. So again, I'm serving that way right now, and it looks like this. I'm relaxed, my arms are bent, racket is slightly open as you can see, continental grip, I rotate away from my target, I toss slightly first, and then my racket is level to the ground. Let me show you this. This position, this palm down position, allows us to then do what I always teach for the serve, which is knock off a birthday hat. Most players, when they serve, and I'm actually gonna use my son's racket, uh, just so it's easier and I don't hit the ceiling. Most players, when they serve, they would never hit the birthday hat. They go across, they've got a forehand grip, mo most amateur players, and they toss the ball, and then right here, they flip. And their racket, like notice you can see the butt of the racket. Where I was demonstrating, you were looking at the tip of the racket, palm down, elbow back. So most players toss and they get into this position. So coaches who teach the trophy pose, you're on the right track, but 
in my experience, the trophy pose does, isn't drastic enough to get people to not do palm up. What you want, rather than the trophy pose, in my opinion, would be palm down, where you could actually place a ball in the throat of the racket. From this position, it becomes very easy then when you get into the trophy pose to knock a birthday hat off of your head. When you knock off the birthday hat, you are truly using a uh, throwing motion. Please go out if you're a coach, buy a ton of these and give them out to your campers, your students, adults, and juniors. If you're a parent, get these for your kids. If you're a player, go out and get a bunch of birthday hats. And practice, you know, checkpoint one, the ready position, relaxed. Coil and get into checkpoint two and then knock off the birthday hat. Most drills that I use too, most drills that coaches use to improve a student's serve is a drill that then once you do the drill, you come back to the court and then you work in, on the serve and hope that the drill helped. Whether it's serving over a fence or throwing your racket in a field, putting a bunch of so uh, balls in a sock, um, whatever it is, right? Those type of drills are great. I mean, you, you'll see coaches, they'll put a, a, their back, they'll put the students back against the fence, which I do not agree with, but they'll put the racket, their back up against a fence and they've got to swing like this. That's not really the path you want the racket to take anyway. But the idea is do the drill and then hope that it makes a difference in the student's swing. The beautiful thing about the birthday hat is you are actually hitting a serve and you get instant feedback. If I serve and I don't hit the birthday hat, I went palm up. If I serve and I knock the birthday hat off, and by the way, when you knock the birthday hat off, it's from front to back. I've had direct messages sent to me and they're like, wait a minute, do we hit the birthday hat on the way to the ball? No, no, no. You hit the birthday hat on the way back, then it circles around and hits. So please, go out and get a birthday hat. This will mean the, the world to your serve and if you're a coach, you'll, you'll, you'll be known as like the serve savant. Like you'll be able to fix anybody's serve. So once you got your checkpoint one, once you've got checkpoint two and you make sure you toss slightly first, again, toss the ball like it's a glass of water when you toss palm up, you'll start bending your elbow, flicking your wrist, rolling the ball, the ball will spin a lot. You want a ball that has very little spin and the way you do that is by actually having your arm in this position, not this position, this position. If you've got a great toss, don't worry about what I'm teaching here. But if you're struggling with your toss, here's a nice fix for it. Toss with your palm to the side, then the ball can't spin and you'll be super consistent. When you toss, the strings are gonna be facing down, you're then gonna knock the birthday hat off of your head. That's checkpoint number three, the racket knocking off a birthday hat. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three. So scroll through the video and look for these positions. And if you don't see these positions, work on them and shadow them and try to get your body used to the feeling. Checkpoint number four, once you bring the racket in over the head, as the racket is knocking off the birthday hat, that is when your body is gonna come become exploding, right? So as you toss and you get into checkpoint two, your body is gonna be going down, and then as your racket passes in over your head, that's when your body is gonna come up. Now, the reason we want to use a continental grip, that, that knuckle and heel pad on bevel number two, the reason we wanna use that grip is so that when the racket comes around, the racket comes around on edge, right? So most players are like this. Most players have their strings facing up at this point. You look at the best servers at any level. The best servers at 3.0, the best servers at the 5 UTR, and then obviously the best servers in the world. The best servers, the ones who have the best spin and power and, and combination of both, come around on edge. So what you should look for when the butt cap is pointing forward over the net is that the racket is on its edge, looking like you're actually gonna hit the edge of the racket. The reason we want this is because it requires pronation. Pronation is the fastest way to fire the forearm into the ball. You don't wanna be hitting like this. There's no wrist flick. Yes, is the wrist a link on the serve? Yes, but you don't wanna be going palm up to palm down. It's not like you're shooting a free throw in basketball and putting your hands, putting your hand in the cookie jar that's up on a top shelf. That's not how you serve. The best way, that's not the best way to serve. The best way to serve is to lead with the edge of the racket and then as you get to the ball, turn. 
turn the racket and then your strings go, if you're right-handed, from facing left, then you make contact. You can hit side spin still. You can still hit side spin. Then after contact, your strings are going to face, if you're right-handed, off to the right. So this is called pronation. Again, the whole reason or one of the main reasons we want to use a continental is so that it gets us on edge so that when we approach the ball, we're leading so we can hit spin, but also it forces us to rotate the forearm and allows us to use that natural motion that we, we've been using for thousands of years when we throw rocks at each other, you know, back thousands of years ago. That's just how it works. You want to make that move as you throw. It's a natural move and rotation um, that just ind indicates looseness and maximum speed. Now let's talk about the left arm or the tossing arm during this time. When the racket passes in over the head, the, the tossing arm should then also begin to drop. Many players, they toss the ball and immediately pull that tossing arm down. So when you toss the ball, the toss, the toss should occur around the top of your head, somewhere around head level, top of your head level. The tossing hand should go up after, so imagine the ball's in the air. The ball is in the air and I'm knocking the birthday hat off my head. At that moment, that's when the toss, tossing hand and the racket should be dropping together. You don't want to toss and then be dropping this arm as the racket's lifting up over the head to knock off the hat. It's arms up together and then they come down at a similar time. Watch the pros. You'll notice they don't toss and bring the arm down. You may have had a coach who tells you, you know, toss and keep that arm up. Well, here's a specific way to look to see if your tossing arm is staying up long enough. The racket and the tossing hand should come down at the same time. So keep the tossing arm up until the racket knocks off the birthday hat, then they come down at the same time. Look at Ash Barty as a beautiful example of the timing of the tossing hand and the racket coming down together. Now once the tossing hand drops, we don't want to just let it fly behind. This is a little bit of a sticking point for me and a frustration point because I see so many uh, juniors and adults copying this from Dominic Team and Nick Curios and, and you know, although uh, Sampras did this, um, uh, Andy Roddick, Andy Murray, you see these players, but, but Kyrgios is really known for it. He will serve and go, and this like, and, and it's kind of become like this cool thing to do now where once you're done serving, you go like this and the left hand is just sticking in the back. Look, I'm all for having balance on the serve, but when you serve, you're not gonna be holding your balance for an hour. So to me, the most important thing you gotta do is what's actually happening as you're hitting the ball. And what should be happening is a reactive break. So when you are serving and your racket's coming in over your head and your tossing hand is dropping, as that racket drops, it shouldn't spin you and go back. That when your body is spinning, that would be the slowest way to serve. What you, doesn't mean you can't serve fast, but it's not as fast as if you bring this arm back in against your body. This is a reactive break. Look at um, Dominic Team when he serves. His tossing hand does not go from up in the air to behind him. It goes up in the air, it falls with the racket, it then pulls back in against his body. Look at, look at Federer, does the same thing. Federer at contact from the back, you can see his left hand right here. His arm looks like it's broken. It looks like he, he's in a sling and his arm's in a cast. This arm comes in against the body. The reason is as your body is rotating, remember we coiled at the beginning, so now we're coiled. Now as our body uncoils and comes up, we want to stop that. We want to stop the hitting shoulder and accelerate the racket. Imagine two people holding hands, roller skating. So you're going down the rink and you're holding hands. If you want to whip somebody forward, you have to slow down in order for them to speed up, law of conservation of energy. So I have to slow down if I want to whip somebody forward. Energy is not created nor destroyed, it's only transferred. So you have to transfer that energy. So you want to transfer the energy that you've done. Everything you're doing, you want to stop all that energy except in the arm and that arm slingshots. What I teach my students is after you drop, after the toss is up and you begin dropping it, I teach my students to point at the opponent 
and then make their tossing hand smell like they're hitting armpit. Watch it from the back. Rotate, toss, checkpoint two. This is checkpoint two, right? Palm down. Knock off the birthday hat, check, checkpoint three. Rack it on edge, point to your opponent, point to your opponent, then make your tossing hand smell like you're hitting armpit. And you can literally wave to someone behind you. So please make sure you're harnessing that reactive break to stop your body and accelerate the racket. Now, once you make contact and don't toss the ball super high, I would recommend tossing at the peak of your reach um, or maybe a foot higher. That would be kind of my range of acceptability. As long as my students toss a foot higher than you, they can reach or lower, they're gonna have a consistent toss. It's gonna help with the rhythm of their serve and it's also easier to hit a stationary ball. When you toss super high, you're, you have less time to hit the ball because the ball falls through the window of opportunity very quickly, 9.8 meters per second squared. That racket is accelerating. So if you toss quite low, you'll actually be able to hit a more stationary ball. Look at Kyrgios. His ball only drops a few inches. So he actually, it's easier to hit a ball that's not moving than a ball that is moving. So, and the higher you toss, the more deviation you have and the toss can get a little erratic. So at the contact point, slightly to the right of you, think of one o'clock if you're right-handed. Then you've got the pronation. That's just the natural act of the forearm going from facing you to facing away from you. Thumb down to thumb down. Notice my thumb is pointing down. Notice my thumb is pointing down. Thumb down, thumb down. I still am making my tossing hand smell like my hitting armpit, and then my racket follows through on the left side. So checkpoint number, and let me explain. I forgot, checkpoint number five is the contact. Checkpoint number six is the pronation with the strings facing way off to the right if you're right-handed. And then checkpoint seven is the follow through down on the left side. And I can wave to the camera because I've tucked this arm in and the back of my hand smells like my armpit. So I'll show you from the side and from the back. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four, checkpoint five, checkpoint six, Checkpoint seven. I'll show you from the, from the back. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four, checkpoint five, checkpoint six, checkpoint seven. Obviously, it's best, if you can, to use your legs. I just didn't want to hit my ceiling here in the basement. So if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments below. Um, a lot of players, they, they reach out to me and they DM me with questions, but then when I answer you, I'm only answering you. If you can put the question in the comments below, then when I answer the question, all the people who watch the video can learn from your, from your, uh, from your question, and maybe they never thought of your question, but they would love to know the answer. So thank you so much. I know this is a long video, but I really appreciate you taking the time to check it out. Um, if you know somebody who needs to improve their serve, feel free to share this. If you have a coach who you think would enjoy watching a video like this, please make sure you share it with them and tag them, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.